Hello and welcome. This video is going to be going over a few things relating to certificates and certificates of authority and uh, the keys of those and uh, what it takes to get really, we're going to be focusing on the, the web server uh, certificate and key that you need to get in order to get uh, your own uh, private party certificate and that is mostly in relation to a company maybe a school uh, a uh, nonprofit organization so that way you don't have to go and buy a certificate of authority from or, or <laughs> buy a certificate from an intermediate certificate authority who has gone through another uh, you know root CA in order to get this certificate distributed everywhere with a caveat I gotta say that if you if you want a quick and easy way of getting it automatically trusted there is always let's encrypt let me uh, type that out let's encrypt you can go ahead and google that and that'll give you a few details but uh, let's assume that we don't trust uh let's encrypt or we we don't know if let's encrypt is going to be around or whatever the case we want to generate our own <clears throat> and uh, distribute it throughout maybe a company and say listen this is going to be trusted here on out uh, by by order of the uh, you know dev team or uh, by order of the product development team or something like that. Um, whatever whatever the case, I hope this video will by the end uh, you will have uh, a certificate that will be generated by you and trusted by all your machines, and uh, this material will help you with that. So the task is to generate a uh, certificate chain with a uh, a private certificate authority that we're going to be generating here. Uh, the condition is given one Linux machine with root access, and that's just for the trust and the uh, web server portion of this. Uh, anything else can be done really with uh, with a regular uh, user. And uh, OpenSSL needs to be on that, and we're really going to be dealing only with uh, Linux machines and uh, Apache Nginx can be on either one of these. I'm really going to be dealing with Apache. Um, it seems to be one of the more uh, standard ones. However, it seems that Nginx is winning more popularity. So uh, either way, they're they're both really, really, really simple. And uh, I deal with Nginx at work and uh, in the past have dealt with Apache. It really doesn't matter. Uh, so let's move on. The standard is to have the certificate by the end of the standard being by the end of this video you should be able to uh, have the root certificate uh, trusted by the machine and you should be able to do these steps here so let's go through the steps uh, step one is to generate a root key and with that key we're going to uh, generate a certificate from that key next is the intermediate certificate authority key and then we're going to from that intermediate that intermediate certificate authority key, we're going to generate a CSR, a certificate signing request. With this certificate signing request, we're going to submit that essentially to this organization or person to sign this because it's a certificate signing request to sign that. And then in return, we will get back a certificate that has been signed. So we're going to generate the certificate signed by the root CA. I hope that makes sense. Um, and a lot of these, I've tried to name the files to, to, make, to make sense and to be rather descriptive. Uh, if they're not, uh, maybe comment in the video or, or send me an email or something like that. Or uh, if you know me in person, just uh, hit me up and say, hey, that was pretty unclear. And I might revise this video or, or make comments. Uh, all these commands are going to be listed in the comment description. Uh, and they're also available on my wiki because I, I like to keep track of things and have my own knowledge base uh, there. So we're going to add the certificate. Uh, the final kind of step in, in some of this is to add the certificate. Uh, this portion requires root access. Add the certificate to the operating system's trust. In the Debian machine that I'm on, this is a, uh, a unique machine. It's a CI20. It's a, a MIPS. Um, it's pretty pretty neat. It's it's a little slow. It really is, but um, 
do you know it, it does not consume like any any power uh, I'm putting a heat gun on this and it's only 75 uh, degrees Fahrenheit which is uh, 23 uh, yeah 23.5 degrees Celsius uh, for uh, for its output directly on the CPU and that is like that's really really uh, not warm at all but this other arm slash beagle bone I have right over here it was uh, significantly hotter but it's a neat little machine but let's not go into that uh, let's go and start talking about the next step which is really from this point on if you are looking at this video from I'm I'm a server admin or I'm an, uh, a developer that has a brand new application that's really cool and I want to get this signed uh, Kevin what do I need to do and that is uh, you need to follow these steps here from seven almost on and that is to uh, generate a key on your server or, or not necessarily on the server but for the server once you have that key you're going to get the you're going to generate a certificate signing request. Notice the theme: uh, certificate signing request to be signed by the intermediate CA. Okay. The intermediate CA. This will be done by a vendor or the secure the SSL vendor, not necessarily by you. But it, here in this case, when you're dealing, uh, I'm going to do it so that way you can see the steps. So that way you can maybe uh, generate your own root CAs and and. Uh, have them trusted by your company or, or organization as a whole. Uh, they're very expensive guys, so uh, just just think about that. So sign that root CA with that intermediate CA that we had up here, okay? And then we're going to, uh, after that, we want to verify it, mostly because we want to instill confidence uh, with our uh, with our leadership that we know exactly what we're doing and before we touch something we verified that it will work and it looks good we want to ensure quality when we when we do our steps i think it's a sign of professionalism uh, and then finally the web server you can skip this step if, if you're passing this information on to someone else or if you're kind of the a middleman or uh, and there is certainly value in that and in, in just uh knowing what to do uh, so with with the web server portion, that is, uh, you're going to be taking this this key and the uh, intermediate CA's certificate, which is always almost always on the vendor's website. Here's our intermediate CA, and that can be handed out by Apache, and that's why I'm doing it with Apache, is because with Apache I can uh, have a special uh, slot or or, or a uh, a configuration line for the intermediate CA and that's the truth on why I chose Apache is that it, I figured for a description it might be a little more verbose and might help so we will uh, install that on the, the web server we'll try to verify it again actually I probably shouldn't add that right verify again all right moving on to the commands so these are gonna be a little slow since it's on this uh, it's older, uh, not really older, really. It's a, just a low-power MIPS uh, processor. But it'll give me a chance to describe what's going on. So with this uh, OpenSSL, uh, we're going to be requesting a new uh, certificate, si uh, certificate uh, signed by this key here. Uh, it's a self-signed uh, cert in this case here. But uh, with the date is... Uh, the days are rather long and that's mostly because uh, we don't we don't want to rotate this key all that often we'd rather put it on the machines and keep it there and make sure that people trust this one certificate <clears throat> because we can always generate more of these rather quickly once we have this trusted uh, and ideally this is the only one you need to have uh, distributed out to your machines and saying hey listen guys trust this um, all right, let's go ahead and walk through this this description here, and uh, some of the defaults are in the brackets here, and uh, we're going to go ahead and do U.S. because I'm in the United States. I was in the state of Arizona, southern southern southwestern uh, region of the United States, and I was in Tempe. Uh, I'm just doing that just uh, because. And then let's say uh, 
you know, uh, Acme or something, right? Uh, Anvils. Uh, organization, let's do product dev. Because we, we produce the products. And then uh, I am Kevin. I don't need his uh, email there. And none of those, none of these options here are really required. Uh, we will kind of get into this one here. It's it's unique, uh, the common name, and uh, we'll get into that one when we get up to maybe the uh, step eight. Okay. Uh, so let's go ahead and look at the next command, which is generate another key. And this one is going to again it takes a little long. Uh, but it'll give me a good chance to explain our next step, which is to request a key uh, or a certificate signing request f using this key, which we just generated right here. And with that, we'll get a certificate signing request out. The cool thing about all this is that we can, uh, all those command, all those uh, names and things like that that we filled in, we can actually fill in defaults. That way that we can make this whole process faster. I'm not sure if you're familiar with uh, uh, some environment variables with Linux is that you can uh, pass an environment variable without exporting it for one-time exemption almost, you know, to uh, prepend that in front of the command. And, uh, and it'll take that environment variable and use that for that command. So it's a pretty neat little trick there. So let's go ahead and do that because I don't want to sit here and type a whole bunch uh, since I've already had most of these commands scripted out ahead of time. Um, so that way I wouldn't have accurate, fast information for you guys. And that's uh, the country is going to be US, AZ, Tempe, organization, none. I, I really probably should have stuck with the theme and do Acme Anvils. Uh, let's do that. Uh, it doesn't like that. I tried to do uh, control A, which uh, in bash will bring you to the beginning of that common name. Uh, let's do Kevin again, so that way you'll see where that will come into play. All right, so now what do we have? We have the CSR, Certificate Signing Request, generated from that. We also have the key and the cert generated from that uh, from that key. Our next com command is going to be to have this signed by the root key. Uh, so we're going to take this, and here's a CA option. Um, so again, this one's slightly reduced in days because ideally, I guess we would rotate this one before we would rotate, say, for example, the root key or root certificate. Um, and the uh, this option here is to create a serial uh, number, and is similar to uh, binds. Uh, and bind the the uh, name serving daemon the uh, DNS server. It will uh, it has a serial number option that you need to increment. It's not necessary, but you'll see where it will come into play uh, later when we verify the certificate in a browser. Um, it will it will be available or visible, and it's it's not necessary. But I mean, it, it makes us uh, I guess uh, seem more professional. <laughs> even though this might be for just your own private lab. Uh, no sense in paying a vendor to have your, uh, to pay money for the for a certificate that will never see the light of the outside world in a lab type environment, which almost everyone I think should have a lab type environment. So what we're doing here is we're copying all the certs, which we really only need to do uh, the roots uh, certificate and add it to the trust with this command. This says, hey, listen, anything in here, just trust it. Uh, and so, look, we've added two of them, which was what? It was the intermediate cert, and it was the root cert. Uh, we added them. 
I, I did it just for ease of use. Uh, that that wild card there, it just automatically added it. Uh, be careful of the wild cards, as I'm sure all, all of we all of us know that uh, sometimes those can uh, they're they're a little eager, so to speak. All right, we're going to generate a smaller uh, length uh, key for our server. And we're going to again do the same uh, OpenSSL uh, environment variable here. And organization, let's do Acme Anvils. We produce Anvils that will fall on the Wiley Coyote. Uh, organizational name, prod dev is what we used up there. Important, guys. Uh, important <laughs> is the uh, common name here is that this is going to be the name of the server that you will use on it the fqdn or whatever name you're going to be specifying in the browser be sure please be sure you take note of this so in this example i'm going to use host dot local ism because I'm going to create an Etsy host entry for that uh, for with this information here uh, because I don't want to set up a, a bind server or a, a you know say something like a, what is that other one uh, spacing on the name DNS mask or something similar I don't want to set it up right now I just want to get this done so all right uh, next command is going to generate from that CSR is going to generate the certificate. This is the vital step we've been waiting for. Uh, and we're also going to be incrementing this uh, serial number uh, is going to be generated on the cert. We can even make it something different. Let's, let's do um, 101, you know, something like that. This isn't our first rodeo. Uh, all right, you're also looking, saying, hey, Kevin, look, SHA-1, it's not... We shouldn't be using that. I get it. We're going to be using this certificate in another subsequent uh, video. And with that, I'm, I want to troubleshoot. Uh, I guess you, you know what the issue is if you're watching this video. And you want to watch my future video. You all know what the issue is. And uh, it's, it's nice to have, I guess, this option even available to us that we can generate a SHA-1 for maybe an older device like a an older phone or an older lab, or maybe you still operate a government-type uh, token ring network or something. Uh, I threw that in there for someone. And, and you know that you, uh, you need a SHA-1. You can generate your own root certificate for all this, so that way... Uh, at the end of the day, you can have your devices working the way you want them. And it's done. What do we have in the uh, current directory? We have the root certificates and the serial number. This is the serial number. It's a, you know, let's kind of look and see what it looks like. Cat. Neat. All hex. All right. We have the intermediates. Certificate, signing request, and key. With the keys, uh, folks, we should probably make sure that they're, uh, we should really make sure that they're held in a secure location and not readable by the world, uh, as in change that modification on it. For the time being, let's go ahead and leave it. It's out of this, uh, not necessarily in the scope of the document uh, or the, the this talk here. Uh, we also have the server certs. So we're actually going to be passing on this one and this one to the uh, the web server. We're also going to be passing on this one. Okay, so let's go ahead on and, and verify that uh, that certificate. Uh, just that way, we're going to do a plain text, as in, um, you know, we're just going text on out, and we're going to grep for that name that we uh, that we typed in because again, like I try to bring your attention to it. This portion is kind of critical. You want that common name to be there. And it is. Our, our organization is uh, Acme Anvils. All right. And actually, this is not uh, valid. So I'm, I'm, those of you that uh, know me, I'm a Vim guy. But I've been trying to use uh, Emacs more just so I can kind of uh, 
expand, I guess, my... Uh, I, I have used Emacs in the past. I, I used to use it when I was very, very, very long ago when I first started on computers because I had started off on a 46 and it had no internet connection and I didn't know what I was doing. So with Emacs, it was actually kind of nice because you can do uh, F10 and this has a menu option. And when, when I was operating, it was on a, uh, it didn't have a graphical interface. So I was stuck with a uh, terminal Emacs and it had this menu option and uh, I could select exactly what I wanted from all this. Um, and plus it had games on it, right? And I was kind of uh, young and uh, the, the snake game in particular is pretty cool. So I liked it. Um, neither here nor there, let's move on. Uh, and I, for that combo, just so you know, I did control shift backspace. Uh, just get my finger work out in. Uh, so here I'm gonna mention this just for, uh, for the sake of our, you know, for the sake of, I guess, uh, fullness and, and uh, being thorough, right? Is that this is optional, but Windows clients like to have uh, PKCS files. And these are uh, cert key combos and they're, they're kind of nice because you can have one file that will contain both of them, but no web server that I am aware of, even Amazon's web uh, ELBs, uh, elastic load balancers, Amazon Web Services elastic load balancers prefer to have a PIM formatted file. I can't think of a single other than Windows that does uh, these PKCS files. There might be uh, an advantageous reason to use them. I'm not aware of it. If you do uh, know of an advantageous re reason, maybe comment, uh, let me know, e email, or, or find me on IRC and we can have a, a nice kind of thoughtful discussion on chat that we may even others can learn from from that all right uh, our final step is going to be taking that uh, certificate let's do CP certificate over onto Etsy um, let's SSL right yeah uh, certs, okay, and then this is where Debian prefers, and I think even, uh, I think Red Hat, uh, I, I like Red Hat a lot, probably more than I do Debian, um, but I, I did again, I also started off with using Debian-based machines, Debian Potato, PKI is, uh, I think, Red Hat's preferred uh, location, and then we're going to go ahead and copy the server cert over there and then to our private yep. I'm using tmux <coughs> right here and that's the reason why it's I'm taking a little longer to uh, navigate I would have done control or you can do another so control uh, arrows would move you forward and back one arrow uh, or sorry one word that's rather nice at times when you've got a way too long uh, <laughs> command that really should not be that long, but you end up typing it, like myself. Uh, so let's go ahead and fire up VI and go into, and I don't have Emacs on here. I'm not going to. I, on this machine, I think it would bring it to its knees. So let's go ahead and go to uh, Apache 2, and if you're on maybe... Uh, a Red Hat machine that's going to be HTTPD and it's going to be sites enabled and I already have one here pre-made a little bit because I did kind of rehearse this just to make sure all my ducks were in a row uh, and this is just for a docu wiki kind of thing I'm not even sure if it's actually going to work because I didn't verify it was going to work but I did pre-type these commands in here and so let's take note of this okay all right, so our certificate file is what we have for our certificate. This is what you would get back from uh, the command, our last command right here is, is this. And it's generated from the uh, CSR, the uh, certificate signing request, okay? 
We have our chain file, which contains our intermediate cert. Okay. We also have our SSL uh, key, which is private. We actually want to make sure this is protected and not visible to the world. So actually, let's go ahead and, and uh, nip that there. WQ. I don't think I changed anything. Um, Okay, one thing, uh, I can discuss it. Let's go ahead and mod 600. It's kind of nice for that, I guess. And there, it at least won't be visible to the world. Let's also do a chone on that because data will want to read that. Uh, it should. Um, perfect. All right. And uh, so let's go ahead and do service Apache restart. Yeah. All right, now that's done. Conquer. Now let's go ahead and go to. 192, 168, look at that, uh, it gives us an index. Well, let's do HTTPS. Whoa, what is this? All right, so cool, two things we've had done is that we have verified that um, this is our, our final verification phase, and we're gonna go ahead and look to see uh, what the certificate is trying to present us. It is presenting us with a host.localism. I haven't done anything with the key, the, newly generated certificates here on this local machine because this is being done on a, a Xeon based machine and uh, this is not being done that CI20 because I fired up Conquer from this local uh, machine here and but it's telling me that this is host.localism is a common name and that's done for something called SNI server uh, what I can't Remember, remember entirely what it is, but um, it pretty much says like, listen, in fact, let's go up with an example. Uh, let's go to uh, kernel.org. Kernel.org kernel will, will redirect us to the encrypted site, which is nice. Um, so let's bring this over. Let's look at that certificate and look at that. The address was kernel.org and it's saying the common name is kernel.org. So that means that the certificate matches the address of what we requested. That is important because it means like, listen, this isn't being done by some intermediary. Um, you know, we're not being having our SSL being interrupted and re reissued or anything like that. Uh, this certificate was signed with that uh, that name, that common name, and it's, it's pretty important uh, to have that. In fact, some things will even break entirely if you don't. Um, so that's why I wanted to make sure that we were uh, we did that. And it's given us an IPv6 address because we're using IPv6 here. Pretty cool. So let's go back. All right. So let's go ahead and we, we've looked at it. The issuer is Kevin. Remember when I, I said that we would go back to that and, and say that, hey, Kevin uh, was the issuer. And look at that, it's, it's pretty neat that all of that there is owned by us and is secure. So let's go ahead and uh, close this and continue forever since we want to trust it. Page loaded is probably, I, in fact, I know it's not loading the uh, PHP uh, details for DocuWiki, but it does work. And that's what we're looking for. In fact, let's get another warm fuzzy because we, we love them so much and we'd rather have things work than not. Let's do, uh, in fact, I didn't do the verification I had staged here, which is before we want to hand it off to the client or someone else, we should probably look to see what the, um, um, and this is an old command. I need to delete this. Uh, this command was the one that works. And all, I mean, the difference there was that I never had a file name examine.cert. Instead, I had a file name 
uh, server.cert. And this does, in fact, regret for this, this pattern here, and that is host.localism. And, and sure enough, that's, that's it. Let's look at this whole file so we know what it looks like. And it has the chain of uh, the uh, signing algorithm. Control B, page up. Here it is. SHA-1 uh, is a server algorithm, or signature alg algorithm. And uh, awesome. So let's go ahead. And that would, would have been, sorry, forgive me for that. That would have been step 10 to verify and then verify again is our final verification of running this command right here. Um, no, no, another bad one. This one, uh, I think. <laughs> oh well, I don't need a command. I know I know the command here, I just wanted it. I will be sure to get that into the, uh, the notes here. Open SSL, uh, S underscore client. And then we're gonna go do Connect. We're going to do 192, 168, 0, 17, colon, 443. The uh, reason we're doing connect versus, I think it's host and port, is because this way we can do uh, host and port all in one uh, line. That's kind of neat. There we go. Look at that. You've got a reply, and it's uh, host.localism is the uh, common name, which is pretty important. Uh, it's telling us it's uh, TLSV1. Pretty, pretty neat. Uh, this way we don't have to pay uh, SSL vendor for certificates that might never actually <clears throat> uh, see the outside of, an, of a lab. And I think that's pretty important because it's saving some cost or it's even generating perhaps your Far more paranoid than uh, <clears throat> anyone else might be at a, at a SSL shop. Whatever the case may be, I hope that this video has prepared you uh, for that. Uh, in which case, uh, I, I wish you well, and uh, I will submit other videos that might describe. Uh, I'm planning on, uh, in particular, examining the. Uh, communication with Wireshark slash TCP dump uh, and examining what it what it looks like from an, uh, an SSL perspective with Wireshark. I think it's incredibly important because packets never lie. If those of you that know me say I say that all the time. And it's also another saying I say is, is um, it's like having debug at the network level. <clears throat> and uh, with that, uh, I wish you well. Thank you.